thank you, Casey Wolf. do something with me for a second. I want you to imagine what a difference 10% can make in the world. Imagine with me what sort of difference 10% can make in the world. Let's think about it like this. Imagine if Patrick Mahomes completes 10% more of his passes this season than he did last season. I'll tell you what I think happens if, if we do that. I think we bring home another Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> Imagine, who, who knows who Usain Bolt is? Raise your hand if you know who Usain Bolt is, right? Fastest man in the world, right? Back in 2009, he ran a 100 meter dash in nine point, I don't know, five, eight seconds. 9.58 seconds. Now, raise your hand if you know who Darvis Patton is. You may know Darvis Patton, maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, Darvis Patton is an elite American sprinter. In that same race, he came in last place. If Darvis Patton runs 10% faster, guess what? He blows Usain Bolt away, and we're all talking about Darvis Patton being the fastest man in the world. Um, who knows who... Uh, who knows who Scott Dixon is? Any 500 pole sitter this last, this last race, right? The guy who started last is a fellow by the name of Jack Harvey, started at the very back of the grid. If he's 10% faster, guess what? He's a full 15 miles an hour faster than the pole sitter. 10% can make all the difference, and it does all the time. And it's not just sports. Think about this. If 10% of the vote changes in just a few key states. In every presidential election since 2000, we've got a different president of the United States in every election in the 21st century if just 10% of the vote changes in a few states. If, uh, if the trajectory of the Apollo 11 rocket is off by 10%, frankly, if it's off by even one <laughs> hundredth of 1%, we don't land on the moon. If, if the weather is 10 percent worse on June 6, 1944, then General Eisenhower probably does not give the go-ahead for the D-Day invasion, and who knows what happens? Maybe the Nazis win the war. 10 percent can make all the difference. Imagine, imagine if we had 10 percent more brain power. I know I'd be involved if I had 10 percent more brain power. Imagine if the world we're 10% kinder. Think how different things could be. 10% can make all the difference. I want you to think about that as we watch this little video. at the Bills game last Sunday? Man, I do not want to talk about that. <laughs> well, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. Let's let's talk about this catalyst thing again. That's that's more fun. It's freezing out here though. If we're if we're gonna talk about that we should go inside. Yeah it is cold. Let's go. Dude come on be respectful. Take that hat off. Alright you're right. We're in the sanctuary. Go on! Alright so now what is this catalyst ministry thing again? Eric, you're the chair of financial stewardship. You don't know what Catalyst is? Catalyst is more than a budget. It's, it's more than an emphasis. It's everything we do in mission and ministry to impact the world for Christ's sake. So it's, it's our way of being Christ's people in this world. That's exactly right. All right, so there's this new part of the Catalyst ministry plan this year. It's this Imagine Fund. Yeah, that's right. And it's really because so many things are brand new in our world, for better or for worse. And so we built in this visioning process with Dave Odom, who's going to come in from Duke, which I know you like. I love Duke. Yeah, and he's going to help us think together and dream together and pray together about who it is God wants us to be and what it is God wants us to do in the future. So we've already got money in the budget for something we're going to come up together with. We're going to imagine 
what that is together, and then use dollars in the Imagine Fund to make those things become a reality. That's right. That's exactly why we did it. We didn't want to make plans and dream dreams, know what we want to do, know what God wants us to do, and not be able to fund it. And so we put the Imagine Fund in this year's Catalyst budget. All right, so let's talk about the other things the Catalyst Ministry Plan does. Well, I mean, there's the things that you would expect. Like, I love that when we give to Catalyst, we're giving to support the discipleship of children and meaningful worship and music ministries. I love that, you know, we heard some amazing stories last year from Disciple Now and Camp. I love how it supports the growth and the faith development of our children. And as a parent, I love that even more than I ever have. We've always been a church that's been interested in missions. What are we doing on missions? Well, uh, Eric, I actually think that our children are our mission. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so many of the nonprofits in Liberty, we know, were started by Second Baptist Church. And we really continue to lean into that ministry by continuing to fund and partner with them. And Spencer's actually been working on a way to make that more expansive and streamlined in those partnerships, benevolence, things like that. Uh, and then, of course, we've got our long-term ministries to South Dakota, which we're working on 25 years there. We're going to try to finish strong on that partnership that was originally a 20-year partnership. Uh, we're going to continue to be an encourager church for Jenny Jenkins in Haiti. We're going to continue to build these partnerships in Thailand. And those are things we plan to do. But, of course, there are things, as we talked about before, that we don't do and know about, like the Ukraine. And we've actually got money in the Catalyst Plan this time to help support refugee families and things that we might want to respond to over the next two years related to what's going on in the Ukraine. We've also got these really awesome pastoral residents. Tell me what Catalyst does for them. Well, it, it helps uh, offer a supplement to their cell phones so that they can film videos like this, first of all. As a pastor, I hear a lot about uh, issues related to the health of pastors and the health of churches. And we kind of think about this in some ways like people think about church planting, but we're pastor planting. Uh, we're helping them learn and grow and have a healthy experience. So hopefully they can bring that leadership, that healthy leadership, to another congregation and invest in that place. So our, our influence and, and our gifts continue to move out into the world as they move out into the world. And that is so awesome. We are doing so many different things here at Second Baptist Church through the Catalyst Ministry Plan. It's really one of the reasons I love giving to the church and to the ministry plan because it's one of the only places where I know when I'm giving my money that it's impacting the growth and faith development of children, uh, meaningful worship, mission and ministry all around liberty and all around our world. There are so many things that the dollars that go to the church impact, and I'm so grateful for the generosity of our people. One more thing. Go on! Thank you all for being here. I'm so grateful that you're that you're here. Um, I'm glad it's also cold in this room because Eric wanted us to stay on brand with the video, so we're both wearing, as he said, what we wore in the video, and that's that's really nice. Also, want to say how grateful I am for the people who work so hard to make this happen. Um, yeah. 
Tracy Zahn, who is just handling her husband and uh, checking. A very important note that says this. If you have not entered the raffle, we're going to have somebody bring in a few more raffle tickets. And so if you've not entered, anybody who has not yet entered the raffle who wants to enter? I'm talking about Christmas Eve chief tickets. All right, if you've not but even if you don't, Even if you have something more important to do on Christmas Eve, and who knows what that would be. What could be more important? You could sell... <laughs> Then going to the Chiefs game early in the day. You could sell it on StubHub. <laughs> and, and then, just a second, got the shirt later. We work, Eric and I were talking about this earlier, we work really hard to make sure that we don't schedule services to worship one of your gods on the same day when we worship <laughs> other gods. Um, so we try to be real careful about that. Tracy, Jackie Stouffer, uh, Amy Tilly, uh, and Tana Campbell um, did a wonderful job making this all happen. And I want to thank the Financial Stewardship Committee also for all the work and the emphasis. Um, and you guys have done a fantastic job. Eric, as you saw, is the chair of that committee, so you get credit. Thank you. Even though I know I was a kid. Yeah. You're going to get more credit. I will. I'm going to get credit where credit is due when I get back up and talk. <laughs> not now. Not now. Not doing it now. I'm supposed to do it right I refuse now. to do it now. You're not supposed to do it. I'm going to do it later. You could okay. do it. But I'm going to make you do it. Right. Do what you want. Okay. Go long. You are the senior pastor. Yeah. Go long. <laughs> All right. We're, we didn't know who was going to see that video, and so uh, I'm not sure that the shot of me actually throwing the ball down the aisle should have made it in there, but okay, that's fine. Um, I am grateful for all of you, all of you being here, um, grateful for your generosity and for all that you all do uh, so that we can be a place that makes an impact in the world and liberty and around our world. You know, I just got back from sabbatical, obviously, um, another group to thank, uh, in addition to these, the committees and the volunteers, is the staff for all of the work and the things that they did during that time, for so many things, but also to make this kind of a thing uh, happen um, in the absence of, you know, during, during my sabbatical, a lot of that was organized around hopefully getting in spaces where an encounter with the spirit might happen. And that was uh, partly done by looking back on places and moments in my life uh, and saying these are the kinds of, of spaces and activities and moments where it seems like I often will have surprising encounters with the Spirit. Now, at the same time we were doing that, uh, we also had these acts groups at the church that were about discerning the Spirit's movement in our lives. Uh, we had the Christian Spirituality Retreat uh, that was about discerning the Spirit in our lives. We had this whole Acts sermon series that was about discerning how the early church encountered and engaged and listened to and responded to the Spirit and how we might do that in our day and age. All of that was done with purpose. Not only looking toward some of the things we're going to do over the next two years in mission and ministry, but with the purpose of thinking about who we want to be as a congregation. Um, I really don't want us to be a staff-led congregation. I don't want us to be a council-led congregation. I don't want us to be a, a committee-led congregation. I want us to be a spirit-led congregation. And so all of this study and all these emphases in worship and what we're doing even here as we built this plan where we're going to move into a discernment process next year is not just about trying to, as a community, figure out what it is we need to be doing. It's, it's rooted in our understanding that the Spirit works in special ways with us in community and we can discern the Spirit's voice as we listen to one another in community. And so we're trying to make sure that we're planning in such a way and that we're prepping in such a way that we are all listening to and prepared to listen to the Spirit and to one another. I want every single one of us to have a vibrant and growing relationship with Jesus. We, there, there are incredible struggles holding on to faith in our world right now. And and there are good reasons for that. Um, but if you have a vibrant and growing relationship with Jesus, 
It's not that you won't have challenges to your faith. Challenges come in any relationship. In any, in any healthy relationship, in any long-term marriage, for instance, you're going to have challenging seasons and challenging moments. You're going to come to know your spouse and yourself in new ways. And when that happens, what that means is you stay with it long enough for that to happen for you to change and her to change and for the relationship to change and, and, and even deepen. And that's what happens in our relationship with Christ as well. If we stick with it as God always sticks with us, we're gonna understand God differently. There are gonna be huge challenges to our faith. There are gonna be things that make us wanna let go of our faith, but in that vibrant and growing relationship with Jesus, what I think we find is that even when we let go of Christ, Christ is still holding on to us. And, and that has been my experience throughout the years. There have been doubts, there have been challenges, there have been struggles, and we have certainly faced those over the last few years, especially in our world and in our church. And I think this highlights more than ever before the need for us to lean into meaningful Christ-centered community, to love one another, to be generous and kind with one another, to listen to one another, and to listen for the Spirit through one another. And so I want you to understand that when we're asking you to make a commitment right now, I, I know that and Eric's going to talk about the Financial Stewardship Committee challenging us to increase our giving by 10%, and our family is going to do that. I hope your family will as well. But what's even, what's even more important for us as a community of faith and as individuals and followers of Christ is that our commitment to Jesus multiplies. And when we look back to the early church, we see some basic things done together in community that created change all over the world. And they're very simple. The community came together and worshiped together on a regular basis. The community came together and studied the scriptures together so that they could grow in their relationship with Christ on a regular basis. The committee served together in the world on, on, on the community served together in the world on a regular basis. They were committed to serving Christ in that way, and they gave of everything that they had. They had all things in common. They were generous. So what we want you to hear again and again in these moments because I think when we're sitting in these places, what we often hear is we're thinking about what people are saying they want from us. But this isn't really about what we want from you. This is about what we want for you. We want to be a community of faith that is deeply connected to Jesus and the spirit of the living God. And where people come and when they encounter us and when they live in community with us, they experience a vibrant and growing relationship with Jesus. And I just wanted to make sure that we knew in the midst of all the fun and everything else we're doing here and talking about tonight and all the challenges we'll make in the weeks ahead, that all of this is about that. Jason, thank you. Powerful, powerful words. So this brings me back to, to where I started, 10%. Imagine how different we could be if we were 10% different. What if, what if we invested ourselves in the life of Second Baptist Church with just 10% more of ourselves? And, and what if, what if we were able to give 10% more to this Catalyst Ministry Plan than we gave this last year? That's, that's what I want you to consider tonight. I want you to consider whether you might be able to give 10% more to the Catalyst Ministry Plan. It's going to support all of the things that you've, you, you saw in that video. You've heard about some of them um, last week, and you're going to hear more this week and, and next week. And really, it's, it's the things that we hear every single Sunday at Second Baptist Church. Our ministry in our church in Liberty in the Kansas City Metro and, and throughout the world. Now, maybe, maybe for some of you, increasing your gift by 10% isn't possible. Maybe, maybe you've never 
given to Second Baptist Church. Or maybe you've never made a catalyst commitment. Maybe you give, but you've never filled out that commitment card. And that's okay. Maybe we know times are tough. We understand that inflation's high. Things are things are difficult for a lot of folks. And so if if you can't do 10%, we understand that. We would just ask you to do what you can. On the other hand, some of you might be in a position where you can do more uh, than 10%. Uh, maybe you're, you're working to, to grow in your discipleship um, in terms of financial stewardship, and maybe you're financially secure, and, and you could do 12 or 15 or maybe even 20%. If you're in a position to do that, we would certainly be very, very grateful for your generosity. But, but here's the point. Whatever commitment you make, you can know it's going to the ministries of Second Baptist Church here and throughout the entire world. And here's what we ask you to do, though. We want you to actually make that commitment on a commitment card. And why is that important? It's because we want to be good stewards of the money that we're given. We're not a for-profit institution, right? We don't want to make a profit. At the same time, we want to make sure that we can fund the things that we've put forth in our expenditure plan. And so having commitments helps us do that. And so we ask you to do that in a way that you know, again, is going to help in Liberty, in the Kansas City Metro, and all across the United States. Now, one of the ways we do that at Second Baptist Church is most of us still fill out a, a hard copy card, and you're going to get one of those um, tonight. And we ask if you're in worship with us on October 30th, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after that, that you bring that card and return it at the time of the service. But if you're not there, that's okay too. You can mail it. You can bring it by the church office. Um, you can fill it out electronically if you want um, on the hub. And if you want, you can just... You can call the church office, speak privately to Connie McNeil, and let her know what your commitment um, would be. However you give, we just ask that you let us know your commitment. Second Baptist needs your gifts. Liberty needs your gifts. And the city League needs your gifts. The world needs your gifts. And we know this. God wants us to give. Jesus reminded us that, that where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. You can put your heart with God's heart by giving generously to Second Baptist Church. We ask that you please do that. Please give generously and you'll reap the benefits that God gives because we know God loves a cheerful a cheerful giver. So before we go, I need again to, to thank some people. Um, first off, I want to thank the folks here at Woodneath Library, our friends uh, Sarah Peterson Davis in the back. This is a wonderful, wonderful place, is it not? Wow, what, what an asset to, uh, to the Liberty area. I gotta again uh, thank the Tailgate to Elevate uh, team, Tana, Jackie, Amy, Tracy. All of this is because of, of what they did. I also want to thank the. Yeah, let's give it one more the the entire financial uh, stewardship committee: Bill Gossett, Jerry Hill, Annie Pettyjohn, uh, Laura Rogers, Jim Shoemaker, and Jeff Kurtz, our our, our church treasurer. Um, as well. They've done a lot of work um, trying to work on our Catalyst, Catalyst Ministry Plan, and we all ought to be thankful to them. Our staff is, is really awesome. Um, so Janet Hill has just been incredible. Heather Lewis, uh, Carrie George, Angie Fuller, Charles Smith, um, Connie McNeil, just phenomenal. And so I would be completely remiss if, if I didn't mention our two phenomenal pastoral residents, who, first off, um, the, the, the director 
and editor of, of that amazing film, one Ms. Andrea Huffman. <laughs> Just phenomenal, wasn't it? And then, of course, first assistant director, Alina Baum. Uh, just really, really incredible. So, now, before we go, um, we've, we've got to do this drawing. So this is not the equivalent of coming on stage to get your Oscar, but it's as close as we can get. So, Andrew, would you please come up? We want you to draw for a Chiefs ticket to Arrowhead on December 24th. You're still going to be able to make it. To Christmas Eve services because I think it's a noon game, um, and so so two tickets on the 50-yard line, 32 rows from the field. It should be in the fine print when they receive the ticket. Phenomenal seats. Yeah, you have to come to both. That's the thing. You have to come to both. But two awesome, awesome tickets. So Andrea, all right. There you go. All right. Who wants me to pull out their name? Don Long. Oh. Ah, yes! Don Long. Congratulations. You are the winner of these two awesome tickets. Thank you so much for being here. There, there is more food. There's more fun. So go out, have more. You're going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. Go to the game, but you're singing in choir, Don. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.